No, I said fish tacos. Yeah. Uh, let me call you back. Did Papa Musk really say this? Wait a minute. This is looking good. Welcome to the channel. Today we're talking about saline graphite. I'm going to get into what the company does, but stay until the end of the video because I'm going to tell you what Elon Musk said himself, the godfather of EV and clean energy, and my personal price targets on this stock. I'm going to pull up a chart and do an analysis where this stock is going to go, bullish and bearish, because that's how we make money. We need to know how the stock is going to perform if it makes sense as a good investment. So stay till the end of the video for that. This company, what they do is they're a graphite mining company, is engaged in the exploration and production of high-grade graphite. The company owns the K1 production site and several other sites advancing towards production, including M1, H1, and P1. The EV market is roughly a $3 trillion market, and they depend heavily on graphite. And this company, what they're doing is something very fascinating. Let's dig into this company, find out all about, do our deep dive, and see what this company is about. Because if it's graphite, if it's nickel, if it's lithium, we know these things are beneath the surface. We don't want to just look surface level at EV car companies. Look below it. See what is needed to make these companies thrive and be successful. Because then you can ride those gains even further under the radar. Now, this is an OTC penny stock. So it's already under the radar. This is a growth company that can 10x, 20x, 30x. Now, when it's an OTC penny stock like this company, we know they're just starting out. They're starting to get traction. They're starting to get eyeballs. And we could be early investors rather than jumping in when they're all at 500 per share with a market cap of 20, 30 billion. So that's why we look at these smaller companies and see which ones look the most promising and are going to show you the most success. Let's find out. Tickers on the OTC exchange, the ticker is CYLYF, and on the Canadian exchange, it is ticker CYL. With substantial demand, Saline Graphite could supply the industry with the world's highest grade graphite. Now, this is what the CEO talks about a lot, the purity of their graphite. Graphite is a crucial material for producing the anode of lithium ion batteries used in EV and energy storage. Now, we know that Bidey Buy loves clean energy and he's gonna keep pushing it and pushing it and pushing it for these companies to do the transitions and we already see it happening. These mining companies are hard at work with the shovels and axes, trying to get as much minerals as they possibly can to sell to the marketplace to feed the crazy demand for all these companies. The demand's through the roof. The supply can't keep up. So these companies are gonna capitalize on that with what they're finding. By 2030, the world could see approximately 125 million EVs on the road, which means we will likely need a good deal of graphite. This is because the anode consists primarily of graphite and the lithium ion batteries that power these EVs, not to mention the growing number of portable tools and electronics that use the same type of battery energy source. So not only do your electric vehicles need graphite, your little zzz, zzz, your little power trails, they need it too. It's in the battery. If you want to put a shelf on the wall or you want to build a shed because the wife's getting on your nerves, you need graphite. So the shortage appears to be so bad that graphite has been included on the list of 35 critical minerals and metals for the United States. It's on the list. It's in high demand. Now look at this graph. How much raw material does a 30 gigawatt battery mega factory consume? Lithium, 25,000 tons. Nickel, 19,000 tons. Cobalt, 6,000 tons. And ready for the winner? Graphite anode, 33,000 tons. Graphite is consuming the most raw material in the mega factory. So I like this chart a lot because it's going to show us the demand versus the supply. So we can see this red line here is the amount of demand as the years increase to the year 2030 because more and more EVs are going to be pumping out there. The laws and regulations are going to change, leaning more in favor of EV. So if you have the diesels, you have the gasoline vehicles, start thinking about those sounds. You're not going to have the boom. You're going to have the zzz, zzz. Get used to it. So this is the supply down here. So the demand is far exceeding the supply. So that demand line is going way high and the supply needs to catch up. Now saline graphite is claiming to have the highest grade of natural graphite on the planet. They are geographically well positioned for robust Asian markets such as China, Japan, Korea, Canada, U.S. 
They're near China. China, huge on EV. The company appears to have recently added two of the world's leading researchers and innovators in graphite and graphene product innovation to its management team. Ceylon expects to mine about 317,000 tons of high grade natural graphite over the next 10 years and earn aggregate revenues of more than approximately 618 million in that period. These graphite mining companies that are already positioned now ahead of the game are gonna be very successful and do very well if they stay on track and they could keep up with their finances to continue to financially manage this massive project. The company will evolve from a high quality, low cost graphite producer to an innovator of upgraded products in the fields of technology, paints and coating, construction and battery and energy storage. Revenues by, by year could be close to US 300 million per annum at current prices. Now, where is Saline Graphite's production happening? They are involved in exploration and production of graphite in historic resource jurisdictions in Sri Lanka. It claims to hold a land package constituting approximately 121 km grids containing historic vein graphite deposits. These unique and comparatively higher margin vein, which is lump, Deposits currently make up less than around 1% of the world's graphite production. So per se, graphite could be the new oil for vehicles, and we know graphite demand is at all-time highs, and they're geographically well-positioned near really big markets in Asia, US, and Canada. Now, here's a quick look at some of their projects. K1 is Ceylon Graphite's first mining project and operates under the Sarkin Development Legal Umbrella. This site claims to have received an industrial mining license Category A from the Geological Survey and Mines Bureau and Industrial Mining License Category A is the highest category license in Sri Lanka and grants exclusive rights to mine, process, and trade in graphite mined within the area specified in the license. The M1 appears to be an active exploration site in, we're going to let Siri say this one. Yep, and is operated under Ceylon Graphite subsidiary JNDS Enterprises based on drilling survey data and visible surface veins. The site shows potential. And then a new site in, hook it up, Siri, on which Sarkin has commenced exploration with VLF surveys and drilling. This site is over approximately 50 acres and appears to have substantial surface graphite dump. Okay. Very interesting. You can read into all this. There's a link in the description that goes over all of their information on their mining and projects. Check that link out. Now, here's the article I found on Elon Musk, which is super interesting. Check this out. Elon Musk said this about graphite. He said, our cells should be called nickel graphite because primarily the cathode is nickel and the anode side is graphite with silicon oxide a little bit of lithium in there, but it's like salt on the salad. But he's saying it should actually be called, rather than a lithium battery, it should be called a nickel graphite because of the cathode and the anode. Okay, Elon, you're the whiz. I didn't say it, you're the whiz. Now looking at the chart for this stock, I'm looking at the OTC stock, C-Y-L-Y-F. Now you cannot trade this on Robinhood. You need to get like TD, TD Ameritrade, there may be other platforms, but that's what I use to pull this up and trade if I want to. This stock is down, well, not even a percent, but I like it right here. I like talking about these companies when they're at really good supports and they're not too high up. Now this stock has the potential to make big moves. Look at this. This stock hit support beautifully. Support right now is at yeah, high 19s, low 20 cents. Now this is an OTC penny stock, so it's gonna rapidly move around. Now these, each little penny movement is a big movement. Now, a good trading strategy is to know the bullish scenario and the bearish scenario, which is what I'm gonna do. So we know where our support is. Now we always wanna find resistance, which is where the peak of the candles are. And right now, if we're trading short term, it's right around here. So it's trading in a very small window. So a, a small movement up or down is gonna trigger a breakout, whether to the upside or downside. This stock can pull down to 15 cents, that would be the bearish breakdown because we have support right at the bottom of this area. It actually might be a little bit higher, 15 and a half. So let's move this up. So 15.5 would be our bearish move. If it breaks below 20 cents, 1990, somewhere around there, it could fall down to 15 cents. So I would cut my losses right away and get out if that happened. Stock actually just moved. It's up 1% now, 1.2. So it is volatile. It is bouncing around. 
Now on the bullish side, if it breaks out to the upside through this area of 24 cents, this stock can run to 30 cents. If it gets even more bullish, this stock can break out to 50 cents and beyond. Now they're in very, very early stages. I always wanna make sure I get that across that the movement is gonna be all over the place, but as that supply comes in and demand stays high, this company can possibly be affected in the positive sense. So that is it. This was a sponsor video, so there is a disclaimer on the screen. I'm not a financial advisor, just talking about the company, giving you the information about them and my current thought process on how I think this company is gonna perform in the next few months, but in the next few years, it should do very well if the business model stays on track. Hit the subscribe if you're new to the channel. Thank you for watching. Don't forget by hitting that button, it's doing magical things. It's gonna get you a little bit closer to retiring young.